I'm Samuel Neuenschneider, and I'm working as a computational biologist at the Department of Computational Biology at the University of Lausanne and at Vital ID at the Swiss Institute of Bioinformatics. I will present you my Apache Flexible Pipeline to Map Ancient DNA, a workflow we have published in January 2023 in Bioinformatics. The talk is aimed to everybody interested in doing an ancient DNA mapping experiment, beginner or experienced. However, the workflow is not limited to ancient DNA. This may also be used to map modern DNA. So what can ancient DNA tell us? In the past, we used ancient DNA to reconstruct the human past, to get clues about past environments, to study extinct species and to investigate the spread of microbes. Since as the sequence technology is evolving, we get more and more samples with, uh, to extract ancient DNA. The samples are getting older and we are getting more and more DNA out of a single sample. So studying ancient DNA is getting more and more important. So what is ancient DNA and why is it so difficult to work with it? Here I'm listing the characteristics of ancient DNA to show you why it's so important to have a good workflow to map ancient DNA. So typically ancient DNA is sparse. Uh, only 1% of uh, sequences are of human origin. Uh, due to the generation processes, uh, the DNA is fragmented into small pieces, typically which are less than 60 base per in length, which uh, creates problems while sequencing and during mapping. Moreover, molecular damage accumulates um, after the death, and uh, it's visible towards the end of uh, the fragments, as shown on the figure. So typically you see an increased substitution rate of C2T and G2A uh, substitutions the, depending on the library uh, preparation protocol. And moreover, ancient DNA often is contaminated. First, it's contaminated by environmental microbes because uh, the dead body was lying in the soil. But as well, uh, by, during excavation, lab work by uh, the humans, other humans. And this is uh, difficult as um, ancient DNA spars. And now with the, you've got the contamination, thus it's difficult to distinguish between contamination, the real ancient DNA. So there are some challenges uh, to deal with during mapping. And uh, so since DNA is sparse, uh, the chance to resequence the same DNA molecule increases. Thus, to, we have to remove this artificial duplicate because the uh, fragments are short. Uh, sequencers are eating into the adapter following uh, the DNA. And so we have to remove the adapters before mapping the reads to the reference genome. The increased substitution rates towards the end of the reads uh, leads to problems as there are artificial errors in it. So either we trim off the edge of the reads or we adapt the mapping to uh, allow for this increased error rate. This mixture of different taxa or of different uh, humans is problematic as we can't um, um, uh, work that out. We can assess the contamination and if contamination is too high, we have to exclude this sample and focus on the better samples. So you see mapping ancient DNA is challenging. It is repetitive since uh, you resequence or resequence uh, the same uh, um, sample to increase the, uh, the coverage, and it's time consuming. So it's really important to have a mapping workflow which is reproducible and efficient. That was the aim of this work.
And so we thought about what we want to have as requirements. And we decided to have just a lightweight mapping workflow, which just goes from the sequences, the FASTQ file, to the alignments, the PAM file. Of course, it should be automated. So if the workflow gets stuck for any reason, it should be able to restart the workflow without recomputing the uh, present files. Of course, the workflow has to be efficient in speed, but also in space. Since ancient DNA libraries are highly variable in size, uh, the workflow has to scale well with different data sizes, but as well with uh, different computer infrastructures. So it would be idle to have uh, be able to run the workflow on a notebook or to test it on a cluster or even in the cloud. A reproducible workflow has to be readable not only for the developer, but for everybody in order to find problems, uh, bugs in the code, uh, but also uh, to extend or modify the code in general. And uh, to end up, a workflow has to be informative. At the end, we want to know, have some information about the last BAM file. But as well, we want to have intermediate uh, statistics and information to know if the workflow has succeeded or not. So uh, that are a lot of requirements and we take advantage of uh, our workflow manager. In our case, we uh, have decided to use Snakemake which is a great workflow and is developed in Johannes Kuster's lab. So we have developed this workflow called Mapache, a flexible pipeline to map ancient DNA. And I would like to uh, acknowledge all quarters. So what is Mapache doing? We've got a fast coupon with the sequences. Uh, we've got a workflow or a mapping for workflow we want to process. This is a simply take a view of it. And we need for this a reference uh, genome and a configuration file which allows to parameterize the workflow. And at the end, we would like to get the alignments, the PAN file. So of course, from this PAN file, we are, want to have some statistics to see if uh, it makes sense or not. And everything is uh, encapsulated in a HTML report. Of course, we do not only have a single FASTQ file, but multiple files, uh, which will lead to multiple BAM files, multiple individuals, for example. In a recent study in our lab, uh, we were analyzing six ancient Greek samples. Uh, this uh, study was published in Clemente et al. in 2021. And initially we had 290 FASTQ files, which led to six BAM files for these six uh, Greek individuals. So let's see what this means in number of tasks. So if we just take one single FASTQ file, which uh, leads to one PAM file, we have 16 main tasks. If we consider all the tasks, including reporting and uh, computation of summary statistics, we already have 43 tasks for a single FASTQ file. And for the entire year study from Clemente et al. 2021, we have almost 5,000 tasks in our workflow, and we are really happy to have such great workflow managers to deal with these 5,000 tasks that at the end, they are all computed and none of the files is corrupt. We have benchmarked Mapache to another workflow manager, a workflow for ancient DNA, which is called NFCore E and has been published in 2021. So, uh, normally, a workflow is keeping all intermediate files, as does NFCore Eager. Mapache by default removes all intermediate files and keeps only the final files. However, Mapache can also be run 
by keeping all intermediate files. And for this benchmark, we have a run map in the two ways, keeping it the, uh, the intermediate files and by removing them. Uh, the benchmark showed that Mapache is slightly faster than Anafcore Eager. But more importantly, Mapache is using significantly less storage. So here we see the storage used by Anafcore Eager. It's 44 gigabyte for this data set. And intermediate files can be deleted only after the run. So this part here can be deleted, resulting in 16 gigabyte of uh, disk space after the run. Running a map batch in the same mode, so keeping intermediate file, results in a disk space usage of 33 gigabyte. Thus, that's one quarter less than what NF Core Eager uses. Moreover, map batch can be run uh, directly or by removing intermediate files. And so uh, the um, peak uh, space requirements is less than 10 gigabyte during a run. And after the end of the run, we just need four gigabyte of uh, disk space. This is 10 volt less than what Anafcore Eager uses. The disk space efficiency of Mapache is important for large mapping experiments or remapping of libraries to another reference genome. So to run Mapache, you need a configuration file where you may uh, parameterize uh, the mapping. So do you want to subsample uh, the initial uh, FASTQ files? Do you want to clean the FASTQ files? what mapper should be used for the mapping and so on. So that's only a small part of the configuration file. And then you also need a sample file which relies the FASTQ file to the library and to the sample. So a sample may have multiple libraries and the library may have multiple FASTQ files. Running Mapache is quite simple. You just have to type SnakeMake, so the workflow name, workflow manager name, and pass the number of cores to use. And then uh, the workflow starts and lists a summary of what he will do. This is really transparent and uh, shows you if uh, the uh, configuration file is well uh, taken. At the end of the run, of course, we are interested on uh, in the BAM files, but also in the HTML report. The HTML report uh, contains workflow metrics, which are really great. So for each task, we see the time it was using, and this allows to optimize the workflow for a given data set. It also reports the time point when the task was executed, and that's great for a reproducible research purposes. Of course, we are mainly interested about the summary statistics reported as plots to quickly investigate if uh, the mapping experiments went well. But of course, the plots are only one side. We also have all these numbers and other summary statistics uh, as a table. We report summary statistics for each FASTQ file, for each library, and for each sample. So apart from this, the HTML report also contains the configuration file and the workflow schema. So everything is encapsulated within a single HTML file, which is great as uh, this allows reproducible research, this HTML file can be exchanged with your collaborators and allows to reproduce the entire mapping. So the key features of Mapache are that it scales well for different uh, types of data and sizes. So Mapache can be used uh, for an uh, initial ancient DNA study uh, screening, where you've got a lot of uh, small FASTQ files and you want to know if there is any 
human DNA in it. It can be used for high coverage genomes, as I have shown you for the Greek uh, study, where you map uh, large fast coupons to a single genome. But you can also use Mapache for metagenomics, where you map fast coupons to multiple reference genomes, for example, to all uh, viral reference genomes. Important is that Mapache uses low, uh, little disk space uh, as it uh, deletes intermediate files on the fly. Apache is able to map uh, the reads to multiple reference genomes, which is not the case for other um, workflows. And uh, the final, typically low coverage uh, mappings can be improved by impute missing states using a reference panel, which may become more and more important in the future. MapAge is freely available on GitHub. And with that, I would like to thank all my collaborators and you for listening to it. Thank you.